Hello, everyone. Uh, today is our data engineering camp. My name is Vladimir Spreiter. I will uh, help this uh, camp in English. Okay, I can think we can start. Uh, once again, my name is Vladimir Spreiter. Uh, I'm data engineer at Amdaris. Uh, today, uh, we will talk about uh, export and import data uh, into different file formats um, from SQL Server. Um, like to start, let's take some data from our database. I think you already know it uh, pretty good. Like uh, it's called School Database, and let's take a query from DBO Course table. So here are the data that we receive, and probably the most easiest way is just like select click on the right top corner of a table and then all the table is selected right click copy open excel and paste the data keep in mind that uh, we do have like uh, two options uh, here like copy with uh, headers and just copy, just copy will cop will copy the selected uh, just selected uh, rows with headers like usually it copies like the names of the columns and so on. Yeah, from here we can also um, make another. Um, exporting of the file of the file like uh, here we have save results as options uh, where we are have usual save uh, window from windows like the, the, there is two options to save the data files like csv data file and txt data file so the only thing with that we need to GIF is just the file name, let it be course, click button save, and if we will check our temp table, we will have uh, the CSV file in place. So when we will open the file, we will have just the same table as we did it before. Just most popular and quickest uh, way to save uh, the results of a query to a file and transmit there and send via email and so on like it like an ad hoc query uh, yeah uh, there is another great tool here uh, in sql server it's called export wizard uh, how it's to use like right click on the database tasks, export data, and we, we see that uh, an export wizard window, dialog window is opening. A little bit more complicated to configure it is, but uh, what we need to do. Uh, first of all, we need to configure data source, uh, like the source of the data from where we will copy the data. Uh, here we can use SQL Server native client as we do have as a source a SQL native database. So we should point our uh, uh, server name, like for me it's my laptop name. For you it's your SQL instance, like how you uh, named the SQL Server when you were installing it or where you are connecting it. Two options to authenticate using Windows authentication is you are you using Active Directory. If you were creating uh, a user, a separate user, you can select this option and point out the username and password in order to connect. I was not creating a separate user, so yeah, I will use it as default was selected. Um, from the data 
uh, from the data server SQL data server, we should select the uh, database uh, to which we want to connect, then click next. Then we should select the destination, like uh, the where do we need to copy this data. It can be another SQL server, it can be another server because we do have a lot big list of connectors. So for us, let it be like flight file destination. Um, let's select the destination of the file. Let's create another CSV file, like a flat file destination uh, connector is used to create like TXT based files, like CSV, TXT files, different file format. So let it be course number two. Um, after we will name the file and choose uh, the location where it could be saved. Uh, we can select the uh, additional options, the code page, uh, um, delimiters of the file, uh, how the text would be qualified inside the files. Like for example, it will be the quotes. Uh, if the file would be like fix it with, with fix it with, you know, let's keep it delimited. And uh, we do have a checkbox if we, do need to copy the uh, column names as a first row. Let's click next. Uh, here we do have uh, two options, copy data from one or more tables or views. It's when you need just to copy data from the tables without uh, applying any filters on it. And the other option is to write a query to specify the data to transfer. It's when we do need some uh, filtering on the table, might be some additional joints um, and so on. Let's check how both options work. We will start from simply copying the data from uh, one table. Uh, here in the list, we will select the table like it will be the same table course. options of delimiting the columns in the file. Let's keep it as default as it's usual comma CSV file is comma delimited file. So here we do have two buttons preview data that will be uh, selected from this query and edit mappings is uh, if we need to map like not take all the files, like not all the columns from the query, we can ignore the files. And in this case, from all the table, we will copy just two, uh, two columns. It also identifies the types of the data that will be cop copied, like checkbox if, uh, column can contain any nullable data and the size of the data. Usually the size of the data is uh, based uh, like uh, from like top 50, top 100 tables, uh, top rows. Uh, yeah, so when we know the mapping where we want to copy data from source to destination, which columns we want to select, we can click OK, next, run immediately, finish, and the process will show how the steps went. So we do have here messages that would tell us if uh, the script succeeds. We can view a report about how the data was uh, copied. Yeah, here we see some warnings that doesn't affect to our copying process. And when we take a look at the folder TMP, we will find out that yeah, the file actually is created. and all the data is in place. 
Let's take a look on it with Notepad. Here we will see that all text data is with tag qualifiers that we specified on the previous steps um, as a separated or used comma. So everything as we configure it. Uh, when we need to have a separate call, like custom call, that's usually it is written in uh, SQL or might be by hands if you understand the table structure, like might be you have a table diagram that is show, showing you relations between the tables in the database and you can write it without using any management studio. Now let's like limit the query to five rows copy the query and do exactly the same thing, but using custom script. So here we also selecting as a source our server, our database, same authentication method. Uh, for flat file, for creating text files, we use flat file destination. Let's create another uh, file like course three. For example, might be we can use another text qualifier just to see the options. Uh, here we will select a query. We select the quiz, uh, the the query we just wrote. You can check if the syntax of the query is correct. Next, let's do another call delim delimiter to be more familiar with the all uh, options of uh, expert wizard. Let's take semicolon, run the package. Yeah, we see now as a message that only five rows were copied as we wrote in our script. And if we will check uh, the folder, we will have just uh, five rows of the data with the semicolon delimited and text qualifier as single quote. Yeah, with this expert wizard, we can only uh, we can not only copy data to text file like CSV, TXT files, but also to Excel file. The uh, way how we do it is actually the same. We select the data source. We select a destination. Here we need to uh, choose another connection to Excel, uh, here we need to uh, choose the right Excel version. Same for files. Here we, when we write down, it's usually, uh, returns to the default value. So next, if we want to uh, write the whole content of the day of the table, and if we want to copy just something, uh, we can choose another options. Here we can as Excel uh, gives us more possibility to uh, copy data in the separate uh, sheets, we can choose multiple tables. Uh, for each table, we can check if the data types were selected right in mapping. Uh, that's what we need to do 
for each table, for each sheet in Excel, if we want to might be minimize the amount of uh, columns, amount of the data that we want to copy. So when the mappings are in place, when the all the checkboxes are set, uh, we can also run the package and to see the results of execution. Yeah, the data where was copied. You will take a look at the file. Yeah, it was created. And each table was created into a separate designated uh, sheet. So yeah, we succeed to copy data in Excel. Uh, what to do if we want to add some data to the existing file? Yes, for sure we can select the exact the same export wizard. Select the source, select the destination select the exact file yeah choose the right version of excel copy data and when we will select the data like we will have another options, like what to do with the data that we have uh, in the existing file. We can append rows, like we, then we will have duplicated rows. We can delete and rewrite the data into the sheet. So let's check this option, delete the data into the destination and copy just three columns only for course. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> just because it doesn't support for Excel, but usually uh, when we are copying data into the um, database tables and our, on another database or might be same database, but uh, different table, these options like help us to uh, delete data. Yeah, that's what uh, is relating to export data. Uh, import data into the table is made right the same way, but we select the import data from task. We can select the Excel file that we just created. Yeah, select the right uh, Excel version of the file, select the destination. Uh, in this case, it would be our server. Copy data, we can select the sheets that we need to copy. Um, we can rename actually the columns uh, the not not the columns but table names of the uh, of the destination where the data will be co copied. The tables are created automatically, and if we will refresh our table list, we will find out that the table course three was created. 
here and we have the data from Excel file. Yeah, that is all that is related to uh, Excel options like export wizard with simple copying database. Um, that's everything is good until we want to automate uh, the creation of the files and do it on daily, maybe hourly things. While I'm lazy programmer, I don't like this kind of manual things that are repeated day by day. So we will come to another thing uh, that is called actually BCP2. It's a uh, it's an utility that is copying data between uh, an instance of uh, SQL Server to another uh, folder that can be also remote folder. Uh, and usually it's called from command line. So let's open command line. The syntaxes of this command is BCP. It stands for bulk copy uh, program that uh, copied set of data. Uh, so we need to specify uh, the source from where we need to copy the data. So we do have a database called school. We identify a schema and the table, like let it be department. And then we specify the folder where we need to copy uh, the data from the uh, table and specify the file name. some additional options that um, we are specifying that it is trusted connections in order to connect with Windows authentication mode. If it wasn't possible to do that, we then we would need to specify a user with a, uh, and the password with which we will need to connect to the server. In our case, we are able to do a trusted connection to our SQL server with Windows authentication. And we specify that all data will be copied in characters. So press enter and we see that the data was copied. Let's check the folder. Yeah, the folder is in place. So, and the tab delimited file also is created. Uh, so when we will have this command, uh, it can be saved as CMD command and uh, run through task Windows task scheduler, uh, like on the basis with the periodical that you will select and the data will be copied uh, by its good uh, you don't need to do it manually um, there is another options to query uh, these kind of things not from cmd line but exact from sql server so for this we will need to use xp cmd shell uh, it, it is just calling the external files. And here in text of the command, we can actually just uh, co copy exactly the same command. Now let's rename the file to see if everything was created all right. Yeah, the file is created. And 
yeah, these kind of things could be automated by using SQL Server agent, like by creating a separate job. Let's wait until the agent is up. As a first step, um, just forgot to copy the right comment. So once again, new job, select a step, I select a database where it will be run, copy the, the file here we will um, once again rename the file, give a name to a step, create a schedule. If we need to, if we don't need, we well, actually we need it. If we want to run it uh, on a daily basis, select the days when it should be run, select the time. Uh, if it uh, has uh, an end date, like all the options that we need, give the name of the schedule. And can be blank, yeah, job name. Yeah, here then we will have a job that we can run manually, but uh, as far as we configure it, uh, already a template for everyday running, so it can run automatically let's not wait until the 12 o'clock will come and check if it's working yeah all the steps wrote success and new file department csv is created so uh, this xp cmd shell actually doesn't run by default from SQL uh, from SQL Server just because it need to uh, some options to be changed by default this option is uh, off. Uh, how to configure these things? So we need to go to our server, uh, go to facets. Basics here is server security, and we we need to be sure that XP CMD shell enable it set to true. By default, as I said, it's false. Um, what to do if we <laughs> we need to write a query? Yeah. Uh, then the command is change a little bit. So let's go once again to our CMD. So here, instead of out, we write an option query, query out. And actually here we can write a query that we need to write, uh, to launch. Like it could be like with joins, with limiting the uh, amount of data. Um, let's do it. Top two from the table, same options. Yeah. Um, in order to, in this query out things, we need to add an additional parameter like the database to which it should 
connect it doesn't understand so that actually we are connecting to the school yep. another exception yeah from if i forget to, to run uh try it from close and not only from but actually the columns which i want to copy um table query out yeah let's rename the file to b5 yeah and now we see the results of the query uh, that the rows were copied uh, if we will check the folder the file is in place all the data is in place same way, way it works for um, importing data from the files that we were creating for this we need to actually create a table if you want to check if just new data was created no it's for department things let's rename the fields and do reverse think uh, here we will change the direction uh, it will be not out but it will be in it will say us that in the department to table we will copy the data from department to csv And if you will check the data, the data would be in place. So yeah, these are the options, the main options um, that are used to copy data from SQL and to SQL by using SQL Management Studio. Uh, the ones that know excel better uh, is are usually using its possibilities they're opening actually excel and in excel in the data tab we have option get data from the database here we have a connection to the database where we need to point our our server our database to which we want to connect if we want to have some custom query of course we can write the query that we want to write if we don't want we just choose the tables from this list of the objects in the server in the database and the table with the data with some formatting and design uh, things is created um, there is another options that are used for more complex things uh, it's actually some etl stuff already uh, i will show you out how it is created via Visual Studio with installed uh, data tools. Um, it's used by data engineers. Um, it's native for Microsoft users like Node.net. Uh, also exist another options like uh, um, how are they called? went out from the data uh, from my head um, 
yeah, let's let's focus on Visual Studio. Uh, while I will tell you, I will remember the names of these tools. Uh, Visual Studio here, uh, when we will install data tools, uh, we will have a project that is called uh, Integration Services Project. We will give the name of the project. And here we have a big list of uh, components. Like for us, what we need uh, here to, is data flow task that actually does almost the same things as uh, wizard in uh, our SQL server. So here we have a source. Uh, let be database and destination. So yeah, for if we want to create txt csv files, we create uh, we choose flat file destination. If we will want to create uh, an Excel file. Uh, we will choose Excel destination. So let's check for CSV and then we will check how to do it by using Excel. So first of all, we need to establish connection manager uh, to uh, server. So if we have this connection manager in the list, we are selecting it. If we don't have, we click new and pull it out as in every connection manager, the server name, authentication mode to which database we should connect. And then we can change, check our connection if everything was introduced correctly. So I do have this connection manager in place. So I will just, uh, select it uh, and click OK. I do have already uh, access to the list of the objects in the server. Um, and I'm selecting persons. So after I select the table that I want to copy, I do have the understanding of uh, which columns are presented in place. If I want to change output columns, names, like the names, how they will be created in the file, I can do it here. Uh, let's not change anything. Drag a line from the source to the destination to know how the, that the flow of the data would come from the source to the destination server. Here we need to create a connection to a file. It will be delimited once again. Select a folder, select the data type, uh, data file type. Uh, let's name the, the file and usual options that we already saw in our wizard. The file is delimited. If we want to point out some text qualifiers, if we need to some column names in the, uh, in the header, how the rows would be delimited, like if it's comma delimited file, semicolon, and so on. Yeah, and we can change data types if we want in the advanced options. So yeah, we don't need to do it. Then in mapping Spain, we once again, like as it was an, in wizard, export wizard, we can uh, map the columns from the source to the destination, click OK. 
and when we will run the package, uh, we will see that some data was copied. The file is in place. It can be opened. And we will see that actually the files were created with the names and with the uh, format options that we specified in our uh, package. Same for Excel files. But instead of flat file, we should choose Excel. Uh, destination, drag a line to have this destination, the columns from the source. Uh, yeah, uh, for Excel, usually uh, we need to have already a template, uh, the file name of the file with the columns, with the column formats and so on in place. So usually in order to do this, uh, is selected a file. Let's clean it up. Yeah, and persons, I think we will copy just the persons. Um, yeah, the right Excel version should be selected. Yeah, and here we can point out the sheet of where we want to copy. So we can check existing that no, nothing is uh, in the file mapping. The data is copied and if we will check the file. So the person's data is once again in place. Well, yeah, this, this tool actually is common, commonly used tools by a data engineer. Um, uh, the, might be the idea of the tool is pretty common to each of the tools that you will use. Um, it's se selecting source, selecting destination things, might be the design will be different, might be you will have another colors, might be you will have another names, but what will be in place, it will be the place that uh, you will copy data from the source to the destination, doesn't mean what it is, is this file to file, file to database, database to file, uh, the files could be different, uh, Excel, text files, well, JSON files, if you want to, if you want to XML files, um, like, so how it's actually could be done. Um, just select an option like for XML or for JSON. Um, let's point out that it should out of work and change of file extension. And name, let's put 
yeah it should be a query json out query out And once again, after we will uh, uh, like point out these options, so we will have the JSON like format, and okay, and it can be saved as we did it before uh, by using the options. Let's once again try to do it query out I think it doesn't want to understand for JSON in the BCP right now. Try to check it. From BCP tool for JSON auto. Well, actually, it worked from BCP tool. And now we will have JSON in place. It's well formed. So then can be processed by any tool you want. It's just, just in case if you will need it some time. So can be done that way. Let's once again check with CMD shell. Yeah. Just forgot to write the quotes. Actually, what you, what is working here can be inserted in XP CMD shell exactly the same way all the special characters like quote should be recognized. And we can run it. Uh, well, uh, that's, um, I'd say everything that is related to coping and exporting data. Uh, let's summarize the things so we can do it by manually uh, copying data from the result set to the Excel file. We can use export import wizard in order to uh, copy data from and to 
database or file. Uh, we have uh, external tools like BCP tools that can be run in uh, uh, CMD or it can be run in uh, SQL Server by using XP CMD shell. Well, actually the, uh, the thing that is done by Export Import Wizard, uh, we can do the exact the same ways by using uh, ETL tool called uh, Microsoft SSS, Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services that actually, well, a programming thing that expert can, expert wizard can do. Uh, then we will have another session in half an hour uh, where I will tell you about the ways how to avoid ex performance issues in um, by using uh, SQL queries and so on. Might be we'll show you some interesting things uh, on the comments you already know. So yeah, let's have a break. Let's have a cup of coffee, tea, and the rest of our heads and minds, and see you in half an hour. Yeah, bye.